And now, we start with the first story for today, and we're now going to have a look at the new home kits for next season. As you guys can see on the screen right now, we can see the home kit, and we can see another kit that is on show. I'm going to show you guys that kit in more detail later on, so bear with me, but let's scroll down, you guys, and I think right now we have to accept that this is our home kit for next season. Um, They were close, but this kit, for me, they were close, they were close. If this whole thing was uniform, the zigzags, this could have been a madness. Yeah, a bit abstract, but that uniformity would have just made it make more like sense and be more cohesive. But I don't know, man, it, these rectangle blocks reminded me of the Croatia kit for some reason. It just feels like it was tacked on for no reason. Like the designer was like, you know what, this would be too perfect, too beautiful. Where if it was like a uniform zigzag, let me let, let, let me ruin it a little bit. And this is the result we get. I mean, I can see why, but it just feels very unnecessary. It feels like they had like two different kits, some leftover fabric and materials and decided to Frankenstein it up. But uh, yeah, I think we have to accept that's the kit. And you know, the hypocrisy, the hypocrisy, I'm gonna have to buy it. It's what I have to do now, but um. You know, I'll, I'll keep an open mind because the kits do grow on me as you see them more, as you wear them, etc, etc. The pink kit from this season that was hated at the start of last season. It's nice. It's not that bad. And yeah, you know, maybe I need to give some more time for this kit. Let's see. Let, let, let's see you guys. But anyway, we had some new photos being shown of the goalkeeper kit for next season. And I have to say, you guys, this is a thing of beauty. Now, I'm liking the, the wrist without the high collar. You don't really see that too much. I, I think that could give it a nice fit. I, I, I imagine I could rock this with the few out outfits I've got right now. You guys to keep it real. I just love the minimalism. I love like um, the gradient, how it like kind of starts off from like a, a darky gray before blending into like lighter tones. I think it looks very nice. It's different though, because most times goalkeepers have the, the crazy colors like you know, if this was like the goalkeeper kit, that would make a lot of sense. That they say there's a science behind it because it puts off strikers. But I guess we will never now know. But um, for me, it's funny that the goalkeeper kit, kits I never ever buy, is the must cop for me. I can't wait to get this. This looks absolutely cold. It looks so mad. But um, there you guys have it. That was a look at the new kits for next season. And to let you guys know, expect there to be some releases later this month and when they come you guys of course blue lines tv has got you covered come for your 10 percent off discounts and of course it's a great way to just you know share some love and really help out the channel so right now you guys we move on to the second story today and now you guys we move on to the second story today and i'm gonna do things a bit different i like the story that came out from brazil this time and it's in regards to another brazilian wonder kids he plays for Santos, he's 17 years old, and he goes by the name of Kaiki Fernandez. And wow, you know, this guy for me could be like one of those legit, legit wonder kids. Of course, I'm gonna discuss the news and break down who the player is for you guys as well. So right now with Kaiki, he's currently playing for Santos. He made his debut for them around February and since then has been a first team player in their team at 17 years old. He has interest from across Europe. In the Premier League, interest from us, Arsenal, Man United, clubs like Ajax and so many more outside you guys. And already this season since making his debut in February, he has picked up 14 apps playing in the Copa Libertadores recently against Boca Juniors where he had an outstanding game against Carlos Tevez, absolutely having him in his pocket. So wow, you know, he has promise, he's exciting. And due to the apps that he's picking up now, it could be easy for him to potentially make a move to an English team. But right now, I'm sure you guys are like, okay, this guy sounds promising, but come on, Nini, give us some more information, break his game down, give us some more details. Like, who exactly is he? How does he play? And what's he about? Now, from Brazil, he is seen as the Thiago Silva regen for very good reason. And it's quite funny how it tends to work in football. I think they're like the same height. He's like 184 centimeters, the same as Thiago Silva. And of course, he is a modern day ball playing center back. And I think that is so important with how, you know, tactics have shifted. You know, back in the day, it was about the midfield players, especially in your deep line playmakers. That would be the ones to receive from the defenders to kickstart attacks. But right now in football, 
you know, why base possession midfield when you can have your defenders doing both essentially and that is what the game is about. So Kaiki at 17 is doing big things and what really makes this game stand out even more is, you know, his technique, his composure, his skill and of course he has the physicality to match as well. Now one thing that he has that really elevates this game is those leadership abilities. Uh, unsurprisingly, he's been representing Brazil throughout the many uh, different age groups over the years captaining them throughout many different ones as well. He is known for his elegant style. He can play either on the right-hand side of the defense or the left-hand side, but you know he is right-footed and he tends to play more down that right-hand side. Of course, he can play passes between the lines. Of course, he has a very good uh, spread and range when it comes to his passing. And you know these are qualities that you need. And one of the most important qualities too is the composure that he already has that is very young age. Um, you know, it's all about them like midfield style type of center back. I think that's how the game is starting to progress now. So having someone that can play passes between the lines is very important and key for a team like us. Now, of course, you know, at 184 centimeters, it's not like he's uh, small, but at the same time, it's not like a defensive colossus. You know, defenders tend to be six foot plus. But I think for me, this really emphasizes the intelligence behind which Kaiki plays with, because of course, it's about how you use your body, the positions you take up from the field, the passing options you make, your decision making, etc., etc. And you know, he's stepped up in big games for Santos. He's in uh, under a lot of pressure, and he's really shining so for me this is definitely uh, a very promising defender i'm hoping that we are going to get more news surrounding him now of course since we've signed tiago silva i am absolutely in love with him and if we've got a chance of signing the regen of tiago silva then you guys we gotta we gotta pay whatever we have to to make it happen and now we move on to one of the big stories for today it's in regards to romelu lukaku and there are some big updates coming out from Italy. Right now, Lukaku is a very popular man in the month. He scored 27 goals in 41 games for Inter Milan. He scored 21 goals in the league, 10 assists. Uh, play one of the biggest parts behind Inter Milan's uh, Scudetto success for this season. And unsurprisingly, Arsenal and Man City are the two main clubs showing the most interest for Lukaku. Now, of course, this comes down to Holland, and I'm going to briefly discuss this. Right now, it seems like Dortmund may be securing Champions League football. They've won five games on the bounce. They're looking unreal right now. And they've been very adamant that they do not want to sell Holland. Now, a lot of Holland's sell would have depended on Dortmund missing out on Champions League football, and that would have forced them to have to drop their asking price for Holland. However, they are adamant that they would prefer to sell him next season, even though his release clause would mean that he leaves for half the money they want for him right now. And I guess that makes sense because players like Jaden Sancho seems destined to be leaving Dortmund this season, and there's no way they're going to sell two players like that in one window. So that is the reality surrounding Holland at this point in time, but anything can happen, you guys. So this is where the new Lukaku news today, I mean, I can't lie, you guys, it's, it's quite sexy. It's, it, it's quite interesting to hear. And as I'm saying, these reports came up from Calcio Masato. I said it in the most English way possible. I apologize to my Italian subscribers. But um, anyway, we got some news today. That is the asking price for Lukaku. And it's set at around 120 million euros. I think that's like top of my head, like 105 million, 100 million. It's not too bad for a player that's one of the best strikers in the world. Now, you might be wondering why would Inter Milan even consider selling maybe their best, most important player in the team? Well, maybe it's because they don't really have a choice. Lukaku has told his agency, Rock Nation agency, to keep doors open over a potential move. And this is because Antonio Conte's future, of course, is in doubts with Inter Milan. Now, you might be thinking, typical Conte, every time the guy wins something next season, it has to just collapse and fall down. The beasts have to come out from nowhere. But, you know, the concept of Inter Milan is completely different. They are currently owned by Zhang Suning. And due to the cold of the climate, Inter Milan are struggling financially. Now, reports came out this past few days. Suning actually met up with the Inter Milan squad, met up with Conte and the players to address some concerns. Would he be comfortable taking a wage cut during these difficult financial times? Which, of course, you know, how many players are going to be that excited? But it was what wasn't said during that meeting with the entire squad that has left many players and the manager, you know, having doubts about their long term careers with Inter Milan. 
there was no talks about the future, how Inter Milan are going to grow, what the ambition is, what the long-term plan is. And, you know, Antonio Conte, you know, one thing about this guy is he's a serial winner. Give him what he wants and there's a big possibility, massive possibility that you are going to get the silverware that you want. So if he decides to go, reports are saying that Lukaku will be out that door straight away hence telling his agency to keep the doors open. And if you deep it to, a Lukaku sale could be the perfect thing for Inter Milan to help them during these precarious times. So right now, you guys, I'm gonna get my thoughts and opinions. I think Lukaku up front, I think this guy could be the one. Of course, he suits playing in a back three system. He's been doing it for the Belgium national team for years and years. Um, one of the best strikers easily in the world. And of course, isn't it just like typical Chelsea fashion? You know, we signed Lukaku at the time where he's one of the most promising young players in the world to then not give him opportunities to then force him out on loan where he balls out. He proves that he definitely deserves opportunities to then bring him back to the club, not giving him many opportunities to then sell him for below his potential to then try to re-sign him for about three, four times what we sold him for. Um... I don't know, like, I get why it happens because big teams need to focus on the now because I, I get it, I understand why, but it feels like there's too much focus on the now instead of the tomorrow because it feels like Lukaku should have been at this club throughout his entire career and we would have saved hundreds of millions up front which could have been reinvested in other areas in the team. So, you know, it, it, it's actually good though that we are back in the market for Lukaku because, you know, I, I love that he's forcing the club to have to, you know, respect him again. I'm hoping that we can maybe reduce these mistakes as time goes on. It does get a bit frustrating at times considering that, I don't know, we, you know, we, we own these players already and I feel there should be maybe better implementation of them in the team and you know opportunities to give these guys over the years so they can grow but there you guys have it they were the three big stories that came out for today um i wasn't expecting to do a news daily video however the stories were just too good to not discuss today so right now you guys of course i have released a match preview for the arsenal game i did a big interview with robbie from arsenal fan tv so you guys that's going to be in the cards above and of course later on there is going to be match day content coming out let's hope we secure the win against arsenal and expect to see the review and player ratings too. So on that note, you, so on that note, you guys, I'm the EFC. This is Blue Lines TV. I'll catch you guys later with some more videos. Cool.